then about three days ago, I was asked to come in here, right, Cindy and Thelma. They were like, please come help us teach these people how to do a pitch deck. So that's why I'm here. I'm privileged to be here. Does it, has anyone heard of the dinner in Blanc party? I'm going to that in 30 minutes. No, in an hour. So, yeah, so Todd's like, hurry up, do your presentation. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about myself. My name is Yancy. Now, I know I don't look or sound local, but I've lived here for 17 years. And when I first moved here, I lived in Wai'anae, Chee Hoo. And I can say tree, and I'm married to a local boy. <laughs> I am not red dot Indian, but I am Cherokee Indian. Can you believe I'm Indian? The high cheekbones, maybe? <laughs> oh, of course, telling me. So cute the baby, yeah? I was born in Mississippi. It's a small town on the Gulf Coast of Mississippi. Has anyone been to Mississippi? You don't have to. You don't have to say it. Yeah, he, he hesitated. He's like, oh, a little bit. Oh, you've been to Mississippi. Oh, wow, military. Military? OK, cool. So I'm from Ocean Springs, which is right next door to Biloxi. Cool. I don't see that often here in Hawaii, so that's good. I had an all-girl family. Does anyone have just sisters in their family? Just brothers? Oh, it's crazy. We're fighting and scratching the hair and pulling out teeth, all kinds of stuff. It's fun. All-girl family. My poor g -ma, that's what we say in the South, g -ma. Have you ever heard that? <laughs> so when I was young, this is my stepfather, uh, this is my real dad, and he left the picture, unfortunately, when I was only two, and my stepfather raised me. Now growing up, a lot of bad things happened. I came home and my house was burned down to the ground. I was 15 and a half years old, and we took our shoes off in Mississippi like you do in Hawaii. I remember coming home and all the, the shoes were outside. I'm like, oh my gosh, who is in the house? Fortunately, they had all left the house, but it did burn down. And later that same year, my, fa my father was diagnosed with lung cancer. So it was, I had a hard life, maybe not as hard as some, but I wanted to share that with you because the doctor said you have six months to live. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I didn't know what I was gonna do. So I asked my dad, what's one thing you wanna do before you pass away? What do you think he said? Come guess, anything. Go to Hawaii. Go to, that's like the main thing, but you're not gonna say that because you live in Hawaii. <laughs> What else? Skydiving, a, a nice vacation, Bora Bora. He wanted to go see Aerosmith. <laughs> Who, yeah, all right, you're like, yeah! So I was able to get him backstage passes to go see Aerosmith. This is Steven Tyler and my father over there. So that happened. I called the Coliseum and uh, fortunately they were able to give us backstage passes, no questions asked, because I said, my dad's dying, please let us get tickets, and he did. So a cool opportunity for me. Now, as time went on, of course, I have a mother, right? She couldn't handle the pain, and she took uh, depressant medicines, and then she drank on top of it. So I um, was like, I have to have something. So I had faith, and I got emancipated. Does anyone know what that is? So I was legally 21, but I didn't do it to drink. I did it so I could be responsible and get a good job, get an apartment. So I was legally 21, and I packed my things later, and that's what brought me to Hawaii. So there's my long story short to let you know that I'm a local girl. 17 years I've been here. Hey, what happens when I, when I hit 20? What does that mean? Nothing? You just been here for 20 years? Okay, I got, thought I got special or something. <laughs> I'm totally outside the box. That's where the name comes in. I used to race motorcycles and cars. This is uh, St. Tammany, Louisiana. This four-cylinder modified car. That's a Jesse James kit car that I um, had my, my, me and my friends, we made that car. That, that motorcycle. I absolutely love, this is my favorite food, sushi. No, I didn't eat a Genki sushi, <laughs> I, but I love sushi. That's my favorite thing. So sushi after this, maybe dinner LeBlanc. I think we have sashimi on our menu. So good. I do jujitsu. That's how I know Todd. I go to Grappling Unlimited. I did a Naga tournament in jujitsu. And here's my last name. Yes, that is my legal last name. And it means, this is my driver's license to prove it. <laughs> I legally changed it to that. And it means certainty. So that's what I'm all about. And that's what I want you, when you're presenting up here your product or service, you got to have absolute certainty in your product that it's going to change someone's life. That, that to me means so much. I was so certain that I was going to marry this guy. 
I love the Polynesian Culture Center. I love fire dancers. When I did this presentation at Kamehameha Schools, the guy in the audience was like, oh, that's my friend. I'm like, oh no, don't tell him I want to marry him. <laughs> I just like the culture of Polynesian and all that. Not actually this guy, I was so embarrassed. <laughs> so I am married, my husband's in the back. Everyone say hi to Corey. So he has not fire danced for me, but we just had our five year anniversary. So I was hoping, you know, one time he could do the fire dancer for me, or how do you do that, the mail, or <laughs> maybe, maybe, it's, maybe my 20 year anniversary in Hawaii, Todd, tell him. <laughs> All right, tell Corey, <laughs> he's got to want to do it. <laughs> so thank God he only has three letters in his last name, so now I'm unequivocally Jim. I went to many different schools growing up. Uh, this, I have to tell you a secret about this, because I'm in the right room. Guess what my degree is in? Manage computer science. I have a computer science degree. So when you guys asked me, I was like, yes, I can finally put my degree to good use, kind of. <laughs> I never really did anything in network security, but I took system analysis and design, network security. I'm going to age myself. COBOL programming. OK, a C++, JavaScripting. I took all those courses. Can you believe that? So maybe I can be on the programming side here. P pick me up on your team. <laughs> I've worked at Cool Jobs, Treasure Bay, yeah, impressive, yeah. A Treasure Bay Casino is a casino in Mississippi. I went to vet school, dropped out because I was like, oh, these animals are dying, not, not happy animals, so it didn't work out for me. But mainly, this is what brought me to Hawaii. I was Department of Defense. I was equivalent to a GS-11. I was in charge of all the GWAT, government war on terror contracts that came in and out, all the soldiers that came in and out uh, during Desert Storm and all that. It was a pretty cool job. I've always loved to read. And I read this book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. How many of you have read that book? I highly recommend you read that book if you haven't. It's a business book. It'll change your mind into business. It definitely changed my mind. Red Pill, Blue Pill, have you seen the movie? <laughs> so that's what it did to me. And I started my own business. I quit my GS position job. Everyone thought I was crazy. But I really believe that presenting is a communication tool that you can really transform the world just like apps. You gotta be able to communicate your story or your app for it to be successful. So I own my company with my best friend, Corey. This is our office. He also does jujitsu with me. And when I married him, I had a pop-up kid. He was seven at the time. So I am a stepmother to Andrew Jim, which spoke at TEDx Honolulu in 2011. He was the closing keynote spe speaker. And this is my dog that I uh, adopted at the Humane Society, Sky. I adopted her. They said she's only 25. She'll be about 25 pounds. Guess how, how much she weighs? 75 pounds. This is not a 25 pound dog, but you cannot return it. I mean, you can, but I was like, no, I love you. So she's three years old now. And we, so we started our company in 2010. Have you ever heard of the world's best presentation? Anybody? SlideShare, have you heard of LinkedIn? So LinkedIn, had a presentation contest in 2010, and we entered. Out of 4,000 entries all over the world, we won first place, and that's what started our company. So I tell you that because you can really change the world with your app. You just gotta get out there and com communicate the message effectively. So that's what I do. I really believe uh, visuals can communicate uh, very powerfully if you can just learn how to use slides. So all of you are going to use presentations on your pitch day on the 24th. Is that the date? The 24th. So you want cool slides like this? Oh, I'm going to help you do it. <laughs> you can do it. So we have won lots of accolades and awards. Uh, we, Forbes magazine have writ has written about us. I've been in Women Who Men Business, 40 Under 40, blah, blah, blah. You can Google me. That's not the point. The point is, because of all that marketing, we got picked up by a lot of publishers that wrote about us in their books. We've been trying to write our book for five years, but everybody else keeps writing about us. But our book is going to come out. We're almost finished, about 90% done. And it's called Pigeontation, because we want to give back to Hawaii. And it's all about simplifying your presentations. And Pigeon is an official language now. So it's even better to market it now. So Pigeontation, I'll probably give a copy to all the sponsors and you guys will we'll figure that out. But really, all bust up, you get it? No more bullets. Are you starting to see? <laughs> so, yeah. You're like, yeah. So we've, our specialty is pitch design. We have a lot of organizations that bring us in to help them do pitch design. So that's what I want to help you do for your pitch day. We call it D-Day, Demo Day. 
So you all have solutions in here. So you have your teams that you have been uh, developing and you're going to do your solution. So I'm going to teach you three things, presentation and design, content and layout, and speaking and presenting. You kind of have to do all three of these in order to pitch your idea effectively. So before oh, you take notes, you can, you can tweet about us, you can take pictures. Kenneth, you're an intern with us. He's taking a picture of my slide. <laughs> he works at our office. You're so funny. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so that's what I'm going to be teaching you today. But first, I want to obviously tell you that there's 2 million apps in the App Store. So I want you to tell the person next to you, talk about this. What app do you use the most and why? So, so tell the person next to you, what app do you use the most and why? What is it? What did he say? Candy Crush. Candy Crush. Oh, <laughs> anybody else? Candy Crush, their number one? Pokemon Go. <laughs> you just deleted Candy Crush? I know. It's like, what's the purpose of this app? So you guys are not going to create non-purposeful apps. You're going to create purposeful apps. We'll help you do that. So if you don't know what app you use the most, how many of you have iPhones? iPhones? OK, so you can open up in your settings, battery, click, scroll down to all your apps, and there's your top ones. Your, look, my, this is my phone. I'm always on Facebook, 23%. Shame. Oh, it needs to be a better one. <laughs> but that's what I do. I email a lot, messages, and Instagram. So find out what your customer uses. Now, I'm not saying go through the door and ask them, give me your phone and look. Well, you can, I can do that. I don't know if they let you. <laughs> but yes, there you go. You do it, hack away, hack away. So whose number one is Facebook like mine? All right, you gotta add me now on Facebook. I'm almost at 5,000 friends though, so maybe you can, I think you can do it. Add me, please. <laughs> Next one, email. I email all the time. I've had to train myself to only check my email two to three times a day. If not, I'll waste so much time. Okay, ready for the third one? You're all your, I know your hand's gonna go up. How many of you, this one's the number one? That app, that game is amazing. I, could, I don't own, I don't have it. Mike, don't download it. Don't download it. <laughs> Get it. <laughs> no, it's, a, it's good. My son does it and it's fun. Did you see this video? This was in Taiwan. So many people were trying to get, do you know, what was the character? Do you know? Some Pokemon character. A slew of people. So I share that, where? Okay, fine. You knew that, not me. <laughs> but the point is, you, can cre you have to create something like this to get your community engaged. So start to think outside the box how you can get people excited about your app. Right, Todd? Yes. yes. So we can help the government in Hawaii, yes? yes? Okay. So presentation design is what we will talk about first. <sighs> this is why. What if I started like this? Good morning. I have a thousand, oh wait, 2,000 slides today that look like this. Clip art, good afternoon, the date. You don't need all of this when you're presenting. For, a, for an emailable document, or something that you print out, yes, you can have. But for a live presentation, you want visuals that supplement what you're saying. I am presenting to you, not my slides. I am the presenter. Same thing when you're presenting. These are not a crutch. You use these to engage your audience. Does that make sense? Kenneth, you're cracking me up. So don't do this. He's taking a picture, so I want to make sure. <laughs> so look at the before and after. Before and after. The first slide, someone said, oh, I hear Matrix. Who was that? It was someone up here. Yes. And he was like, you were like, I think I'm going to sit here. This is something cool coming up. Right? Hey, give that. <laughs> so I enticed you to come to my session. Sorry, Jason. Oh, he's not even presenting. I told Jason, oh, we're in the same room. We've got to be careful now, not comp competition. So have an impacting first slide. This is easier said than done, yeah? I know it's challenging, but you want that slide to be exciting when people are going to share your message. Because, number one, it sets the tone of your event. Our brand is orange and gray, but we wanted to make this techie, data, you know, real cool, because that's my degree. I was like, yes, I can finally do something cool. So it sets the tone of the event, builds excitement. And number three, it 
allows you to uh, want to learn more. Instead of I giving, it's like dating, right? You don't want to go to all four bases, home run on the first date, right? So you want to go, you know, slowly at a time. So same as a slide, I want to give you just enough information so you can go to the next and stay here for the whole hour. So desire to learn more. There's four successful um, th parts of a presentation. Four. There's more than four, but for the time, for the time today, I'm going to talk about four. There's you as the presenter. I can give you feedback and help you a little bit, but I can't, I can't help all of you. <laughs> okay. Product, your app, your service, your presentation, and then your audience. So most of those you can control except for your audience because you, you, don't, you don't really know who's going to be listening. Sometimes you can control that in an event, but that one's less controllable. But the point is... If you can't communicate your idea, your sales process is going to be longer. That grant from the government is going to take longer to get. That funding from that investor is going to take longer. So you have to deliver your message in a very clear and concise way. The purpose of every presentation is you want to engage your audience, enlighten and empower them. That's the purpose of every presentation. But before you do that, you have to design your presentation effectively. So let's look at the definition. This isn't even my definition. This is the dictionary. The manner of presenting, especially the organization of what details? Visual details to create, create an overall impression. How many PowerPoints do we see actually do that? Not really. Look at the definition of design. Not app design, but this is graphic design. To create or execute in an artistic or highly skilled manner. So you got to put those two together and do presentation design. But first, we've got to look at the problem of slides. So what's the problem with presentations? Anyone? This? This? Too much information? This is a document. This is not a presentation slide. There's no visuals. You don't even know the, who these people are, so you don't put the names on there. To, where is the focal point here on this presentation? There is none. Yeah. So especially in the back, you really can't see that from the back. Now, this is a smaller audience, but if you were like online, I don't know if you're sitting in front of your computer watching it, but say you're in a huge audience of 300 people, they cannot see this from the back. And a lot of times the, present, the uh, audience is over the slide and you can't see it. Most importantly, this is what your audience does. They check out and this was, this was an event that we did. And we saw people dropping, they were just like leaving every second because they were totally disengaged. So that's what you don't want your audience to do. If you don't remember anything at all, this is what I want you to remember. This is probably the most challenging thing people can wrap their head around. Anyone want to guess what a slide you is? And online, they can answer it online if they want to. Slide you meant. What is it? Documents. That's awesome job. <laughs> so... You have to tr literally train your brain because in school we're taught put your clip art here, put the title, put three bullet points or more on your slides. So you kind of have to unlearn what you have learned. Who said that? Yoda. Unlearn what you have learned. Okay, just make it sure. <laughs> so slides you meant. You have to separate slides in your handout. So a lot of times when people will say, well, can I have your slides? No, because I have over 500. You don't want me to print them out but I can create a document for you that I can print out and supplement that you can have later. Plus, if I gave you all my information now on a printout, you're gonna be reading ahead and not paying attention to the presenter and learning and receiving it. You can take notes, that's not a problem, but you want to have your slides separated from your handout. Oh, we got some, some, some uh, visuals going on. They can't see me now, but that's okay. So when you present, you also want to see the presenter not the slides necessarily. Okay, so remember you are the presenter, not the slides. Can you see me back there okay? Okay, it's kind of sort of. Well, Corey knows what I look like, it's okay. So, <laughs> so three things when you're presenting. You wanna educate your audience, you wanna change their thinking and have them take action. To me, that's every time you present. Whether it's a, a business meeting, a management financial meeting, a government meeting to change a law, whatever the meeting is, you have to do these three things in order for change to be made. If you follow these three things, your audience will change because you're the hero like Luke, Luke was talking about earlier. 
you're the hero. You have to help and mentor them, just like Yoda would, in your presentation design. Same thing. Now that we're talking about the bad things, let me cover some bad uh, UX design and UI design. Here's the first one. Bad. Yeah, you can Google these too. Overblown, overblown visuals. Do you agree, programmers? OK. Second one. This is inconsistent with other apps. It's not intuitive. Bad design. Uh, disregards common design and usability conventions. That's horrible. So it's the same thing in, you, in this type of design in your presentation. You want good presentation. There's a really great resource called developer.apple.com forward slash design tips. If you haven't gone here, I was excited. I went on this resource. I was like, wow, I'm, I'm inspired to create a cool app, even though I haven't done that in about 10 years. Uh, but it inspired me. When I took my management information system course, I made a game. And I, was up, I remember being up all night, and there was one semicolon missing in my coding. And I was so mad. I'm like, what is going on? I kept testing it and testing My first programming class, I kept testing it and testing it. And it, was, it would throw the whole system off one semicolon. But finally, I made the game, and I made an A in that course. So I don't know how to do that now. <laughs> I was just doing it for the class. But I could, maybe I need to go to Dev League. Wait, am I too old for that? OK. <laughs> There's not many women in that, in that. I could you know, inspire some women, yeah? That's right. <laughs> the point of this is, if you can't explain it simply, you don't understand it well enough. When I have my clients come in my office, I tell them, if you want to rehearse, the best rehearsal is in front of 10-year-olds. Rehearse in front of a 10-year-old. You have 30 days or a month to do this. Practice in front of 10-year-olds. If they understand it, you're golden. My kid's 16 now, so I, he's kind of more ADD, so I have to hone him in even more. But 10-year-old is a good, good range. Anyone have a 10-year-old? Nine? Eleven? Okay. We're all going to come to your house and do a rehearsal in front of your 10-year-old. <laughs> or we can come to my office. Whatever. It'll be fun. I love this stuff because I really believe you can influence a lot of people by presenting and having fun doing it. This is why, how we learn. If I can change the school system or create an app for this, I think this is a huge problem. I think there's a disconnect, especially when my son comes and has an A in math one year and then an F the next year. Uh, yeah, I'm like, what? What happened? So it's a lot of how we learn and how we communicate and receive information. They're having fun. They're having a party over there with the lights. I'll take it. So as long as online can still hear the questions and see the visuals, we're good. Kinesthetic learners. There's, there's more categories in this, but to sum it up, I like to keep it in threes. It's easy to remember. So kinesthetic learner, auditorial learner, and visual learner. And I'm going to walk you through what all of them are and the percentages of what your audience usually is. And I'll ask the audience. Smaller audience, but we'll see. Kinesthetic, these type of people, they need to do hands-on. They're more story feeling, nurturing style. That's how they learn. They don't need to hear it, see it. Just let me do it. That's kind of how I am in jujitsu. They'll tell us how to do a technique. I'm like, whatever, one ear out the other. Just let me do it. And then I kind of mess up that I have to ask questions. But the point is, uh, this is a kinesthetic type of learner. And then you have, uh, and that's 35% of your audience are usually kinesthetic. Okay, 35%. The next one is auditorial, and they're 25%. They don't have to see, feel, do anything. Just, they just need to hear it. Most of the time, these aren't readers. They need to hear an audio book. So do I have any audio book listeners in here? Any audio book? Yep, yep. Yeah. And you're all of these, but I'm saying the majority of the way that you learn, this is the percentages. Your largest portion of your audience are visual learners. And most of the time, people disconnect with the visual learners. Because what if you're not visual? Your presentation is probably not going to be visual. But it's not about you. It's about your audience. So I'm here for you. It's not about me. I want to teach you. I want you to be empowered. I want you to be excited about your app that you're creating. So i got to learn what you are. So 40%, your largest portion. So 100% engagement is needed. So you'll hear, did you hear the sounds in my presentation? the visuals, you're hearing what I say, I'll have you do some feedback, answer me back, that's more kinesthetic learning. The goal is 100%. So how many of you were auditorial learners more? Auditorial learners, okay? How many of you are kinesthetic learners? Okay, and then how many of you are visual learners? Yep, usually the majority. Now depending on the convention that we're at, 
um, the more they might be more uh, techy and auditorial and kinesthetic rather than visual. But it, again, it's not about you, it's about your audience. When we pit Thelma, Cindy, when we pitch, they're amazing, they're from HTDC, I'm sure you do that, but um, I, that's why we're here today, because of them. When you, on the 24th, you're going to open it up to guests, not just participants, right? Yeah. So you can't, oh, you can't have them at the door going, are you a visual learner? Are you an auditorial learner? Are you a kinesthetic learner? You can't do that. So I want you to remember 100% engagement. Have it all. Have it all. Okay. The power of visuals. So now that you know your audience, majority will be visual learners. I'm going to put this on the screen and then you tell me who said this. Who is this? Martin Luther King. Okay. So in grade school, of course, if they print this out, it will be fine for learning experience. But for a presentation, live presentation, this is too much text on a slide. This is maybe a little better. There, it's like a word cloud word art. But people still won't remember this. But what if I just put this? Isn't this, that basically sums it up. Sums it up, right? You don't, yeah, you don't need anything. You know what this is, you know what the speech is. You might not know the exacts of the speech, but that's all you need to know. Now, this is taking it to another level. Are you ready? I don't need a drum roll, because I'm just gonna go. <laughs> da, da, da. So that's even better visual to represent. And then you have the auditorial learners. Isn't that a lot more emotional? Oh, of course. Powerful, right? So let the story kind of unfold and, t and tell the story of your solutions. Don't take it from me, though. A lot of our, our government spends a lot of money on research on how we learn. So this is a, you can look this up. This was the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences of the United States of America. Auditorial recognition memory is inferior to visual recognition memory. To me, when I found this, uh, um, who gave this to us? Comprendio. So I don't know if you were in Luke Sessions, but Comprendio are really uh, awesome guys. They work with HSTA. They own a startup. And they found this research for me, Dan or Sean. But I was blown away when I saw this. So if you want to learn more information, please do. But it's definitely true when you own presentation. Because we have left brain versus right brain. Now there's a lot of tests. How many of you have taken a test on left brain, right brain? I'm total dork, I do it all the time. I took the Sumner, Sumner test. I got 100% left brain. I'm like, dang, I, I hope I have the other half of my brain working. I gotta retake this test. So I retook the test and it was still 90% left brain. I'm not creative. I'm not a, um, you would think I would be, but I'm very linear, very analytic, logic. I'm a left brain business person. So I'll, let me explain. Left brain, analysis, numbers, charts, graphs, logic thinking. That would be me. How many of you think they're more left brain? Okay. Well, you might can't answer until I tell you what right brain is. So let me tell you. Well, this is a left brain chart, pie chart. It's not very colorful, kind of plain. It's still nice because we did it. But <laughs> the numbers, the logic, the words, Right brain, rhythm, color, memory, pictures, imaginations, creativity. Corey, what was your test? Do you remember? Half, half, 50, 50? Okay. So he's half, half. So this is more right brain. This would be a right brain pie chart. <laughs> so I know, ridiculous. When I looked at that, I'm like, I want the numbers and, and uh, graphs. That's more me because I'm left brain. The key is a presentation should engage the whole brain. So let me show you how that pie chart would look like in your solution. You might have to give stats or data to your audience. So this is what it would look like. Here's a pie chart, left brain, right brain. Hey, wait, the numbers are coming. <laughs> so, so maybe that's a little too creative, but be fun, have fun with it. You're in a very safe environment. This program is amazing. I know there's gonna be a lot more uh, coming up, so I'm excited to be a part of this. So again, thank you for allowing me to be a part of this. Next thing. Uh, oh, no clip art or word art. Okay. I'll show you some bad examples of clip art. So this was a TED guy, so don't use clip art. So I know it's tempting, you Google, it's all over Google, it's like on the first page. Try not to use clip art, please. 
I don't really have a reason why. Just we won the world's best presentation and we didn't do it using clip art. <laughs> Is that good enough? Don't use it. Clip art. Clip art. Be, really it is because clip art is dead. It's not innovative, it's not creative, and that's what we're looking for. What was your testimonial on the website? You're looking for like an innovative app that's gonna change Hawaii. We can't do it with clip art. No word art. And, and actually, when we were doing a lot of research, PowerPoint did a lot of studies and some contests about word art and clip art. Just take it out of your tools then. If you don't want people to use it, take it out. But I don't know, people still use it. So no word art, no clip art. You promise me on your presentation on the 24th I won't see any? I would need to see a promise. Okay, thank you. <laughs> so what do I use instead, Yancey? Well, I'll give you some photo resources. A lot of, our, most of our photos we purchase because we have an, a company, so we want to purchase all of our photos. But I know uh, you might not have uh, the funding or you're like, I don't want to purchase photos, but we do through Photolia, Shutterstock, iStock Photo, Getty, Getty Images, but there's a lot more resources. This is just what we use as our company in Power Presentations. Now, kind of rules of photos. You want to give credit to where the photo came from, but you don't necessarily have to have it on the slide. Put it in the note section or in your printout, um, especially if you don't buy it. But there's some royalty-free rules. You just have to figure it out. Now, don't put it on your website, but you can use it for a presentation. There's different rules, so just make sure you do your due diligence and look at the photo. Now there's some free ones, same thing, Flickr, Photo Bucket, Google, Bing. Instagram, there's a 360, I don't know, 361. You can look it up on Instagram, their photos too. And just maybe ping them and ask them for permission to use the photo. That's all I'm saying. Now, I don't know, a lot of these are these, are they gonna be recorded and going online? Then you probably have to buy the photo. That's what I'll say or get permission from that photographer or wherever you got the photo. Or you can just keep the iStock photo on there. I don't know. Not really. Don't do that. But um, Just do your due diligence. That's what I'll say. Widescreen versus standard. This is a big thing. Most presenters don't even ask this. So every time I ask when I'm presenting, I'm like, oh, is it widescreen or standard? They're like, what? Why does it matter? It does matter. Widescreen, 19 by 20, 1080, 16 by 9 ratio. 10, 24, 7, 68, 4 by 3 ratio. Now, are, we're in this same room presenting on the 24th, right? Are, is everyone going to be presenting that way using these? So that's widescreen. So make up widescreen. Did you know on our presentation we have a widescreen and Lisa gave us exact ratio. Was that you, right? Lisa gave us the exact ratio of the, power, the slide, so we changed it to fit that ratio. So... Thank you for doing that. So you got to know where you're presenting. Know your room. For example, say you went to the movies and your movie looked like this. That would drive me nuts. It would drive me nuts. <laughs> Am I the only one? So you're in the movie eating popcorn, eating pizza, and your movie looks like this. You wouldn't, do, you wouldn't watch that movie. You wouldn't, I promise. You would want it to be full screen, like a movie theater. Have you seen that movie? It's cute. Let me zoom in and show you the effects. Look, cut off. Don't do this in your presentation. Sometimes you can't help it, I understand that, but try not to have it cut off, just like at the movie theater. So that would be that example. Here you go. See you later. So you're sitting back, eating popcorn, but you would want it to look like this. Bert and Ryan. Where's Ryan at? Oh, 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 oh. You're doing such a great job. Thank you, Bert and Ryan. You're doing good. So you want your presentation to be full screen. Okay. What, new venues and TVs are widescreen. And then most old venues, even some of the hotels, have standard. That's just a rule of thumb. So just find out, is it widescreen or standard? Example. Again, standard on wide looks bad. And there's a good example. And vice versa. Wide on standard is acceptable. Because many times you can pull up the screen and it'll, it'll get rid of the white, but sometimes you can't help it. But we're going to help you guys, so we'll make it look good for you. Here's some before and afters. I like to show before and afters because some people are like, well, you know, you look, it just looks good, but there's really an impact you can make. It might not be direct impact and you can track it, but we have a lot of clients and a lot of uh, samples that we can share some stories that it is very successful. And a lot of people know us here about what we do. So here's some before and afters. 
Craig Deswatt, you probably don't know him, he's in LA, he was a rock star coach. And uh, we flew out to LA and he said, Yancy, I want to help you be a rock star marketer. And I'm like, well, I thought I already was, but okay, if you want to hire, if you want me to hire you, you got to sell me, show me your presentation. So he shows me his presentation and I'm like, oh no, that is not a rock star presentation. It, do you agree online? Is that a rock star presentation? No, Craig is a great guy. He just didn't have a rock star presentation. So I believe that everything has to be congruent with your messaging. So if you are a rock star marketer, you better have a rock star presentation. So he said, fine, yeah, so you can hire us or uh, I'll hire you guys, you can do it. So we burnt up his slides and the rock star presentation is way better. You'll see it's designed very rock star-ish. <laughs> so I'm not saying that your presentation has to be rock star, but if that's your brand and your theme, you want to match your theme of your presentation. Does that make sense? So don't, I don't want to see you on the 24th, everyone rock star fonts and rock star presentations because that's not your purpose. What are, everyone's going to be different. They're going to have different themes. Next one, a LinkedIn slideshow. I told you about that earlier, how we uh, won the world's best presentation. Do you think we would have won if we, it looked like this? No, absolutely not. So not only did we win on the visual award, we won on the education. See, that was really cool because it wasn't like just looking good. They said they're really educating the market on smoking cigarettes. So we weren't anti or, or for it. Did I tell you how my dad, dad died? Lung cancer. So that's kind of how we started the presentation. And then we found out how people won last year. And if you want to know that story, you can, tell, you can talk to us later. Actually, not today because we got the white party to go to. Ah! You can tweet us or Facebook me or email me or call me. I'll give you my business card. Corey or actually will. Yes, you have my business card? Okay. So we would not have won if it looked like this. So you will not win your audience over if your presentations look like this. You may or may not, but your chances are a lot better if they look good. This was the world's best presentation. This is four out of 88 slides I think we had. It's, it's more emotional. It's a little dark, but that was the point. We wanted to get a message across. So not only does the picture, but the, the, the demeanor of the design too the look and feel of it matters as well. HSTA Academy 21, they came to us and they wanted to change the thinking of the teachers on how they did the surveys. So they hi Academy 21 hired us as a private firm for, that works for HSTA. Uh oh, are we still online? Okay, good, okay. You're doing such a good job, thank you for everything. So their presentation looked like this before. It's, we see it all the time. And you guys, it's not that they, they're doing it on purpose, they just don't know yet. They haven't gone through a presentation or 99% of presentations stink. So I get it. So I'm on a mission to change all of that and you have to help me. So it looked like this and I said, well, who's the market for? What's the audience reaction that you want? We do a lot of subliminal uh, subconscious messaging in our presentation design when we, when we deal with clients. So you ready to see the after? Our client cried. She says, finally, someone gets it. So I know it's a little kitty, but that was the theme. It was chalkboard. We uh, wrote out everything, all the images. It was designed for HSTA. So really cool. Harvard University, we all have heard of Harvard. So Harvard, the business school, uh, the dean, she reached out to us. She wanted to raise $300 million for underprivileged women that couldn't afford to go to their master's, their, their PhD program. And so I was like, oh no, that's a hard thing to deliver. But I said, well, you know, we'll do what we can. So their before looked like this, very standardized, academic, Harvard style. And so they hired us. This was actually our first client when we started our company at Harvard University. So this is their slide. Still very academic feeling, but it looks better. Branded a little bit more emotional, both left brain and right brain. Are you starting to see the differences now with the before and after? Okay, perfect. So on September the 24th, I want you to make sure you have really good designs. Now obviously you're probably thinking well, we're never going to look like this, but you can and we'll help you. But if you just are a little bit better than what you were before you came in here, you're already one up on everybody else. That's all I'm looking for because I really want you to be empowered. So you have 10 minutes to pitch. I've trained people that have three minutes to pitch, five minutes to pitch. I think 10 minutes is a perfect time. The TED, have you ever heard of seen? 
have you ever heard of TED.com? They do 18 minutes for a reason. What do you think that reason is? Yes, attention span. I'm like, you might have to change that down a little bit to eight minutes, <laughs> right? <laughs> How many of you are got to go pick up your kids or got to go do something or go to the white party? So I get it. Ten minutes is a good time frame. This is what I want you to remember. No one will ever complain that you finish early, but they'll always complain if you go over, especially if the MC says, okay, everyone has five minutes to pitch. The personality, the left brain or that personality is going to go, oh, they went over, and then they're totally going to miss the whole entire message. So stay on track on time. Speaking of that, am I okay? <laughs> okay. I have a little buzzer. I said it. So projects will be evaluated based on this. Originality, overall impact, innovation, design, team collaboration, long-term sustainability. What a great program this is. You guys have an amazing opportunity to go through this. So make sure you touch all of these. Todd, are you one of the judges? All right. I'm going to do it next year then. <laughs> just kidding. Content and layout. This is just as important as the design because you're probably thinking, well, I'm going to put all pictures up there. No, don't just put pictures because remember the left brain. They need those numbers, data, statistics. So, so a lot of times when I do this presentation, I'll see a bunch of TED style pictures. That's not what we're looking for. You got to have the, the numbers, the, the data, but just not a paragraph on each slide. Does that make sense? Okay. You look familiar. Yeah, I don't, it'll come to me. Do, I, do, we, do we know each other from something? Yeah. I don't know, it just came to me. Maybe from the global war on terror. Maybe. That, that, yeah, we'll see. No, seriously, okay. So your foundation that you want to follow is this. You want to take a picture or take notes on this because this is what I want you to follow your content. Every pitch design that we do, we, we make it, for this event. So this layout is just for this event. Thelma, when you came to my office, it was a little different because that was more investor, hard money loan, like I need your money now investor type pitch. We do that too. This is not as, this is more social community. You have an amazing state funding uh, program, everyone to support you. So it's a very safe environment, I love it. So you want a teaser slide, elevator pitch. Let me break it down for you. Oh, you're still taking pictures. Oh, you don't want me in it. Do you? I mean, if you want to be in it, I can go. Okay, you got it? <laughs> Ta-da! <laughs> okay. So here's the breakdown. Because a lot of times you're thinking, well, how much time do you spend on the solution, the problem? There's so many articles out there. You've got to just base it on what your needs are. Because I don't like to tell you however many number of slides that you need, because you might need more than 10 or 12. It just depends on your business and your solution. But here's the general breakdown of it. No time is going to start when you come up and say the name and introduce them to speak. That doesn't count. Your time starts when you open your mouth and say your elevator pitch. Now elevator pitch could be your unique selling proposition. Someone had a 30 second uh, pitch earlier on that session about, oh the app that was a free, free, freemium. Is he in my session? The freemium? No, not you. <laughs> he said me. No. Yeah, freemium. Shucks. I was going to tell him. Okay. Well, he did really good on his elevator pitch. So it could be anything, just a short, sweet. Why is it called an elevator pitch? Because you're in an elevator and you got to go to the next floor. So hurry up and tell me. Get, pique my interest like that. Well, you have 10 minutes, so you got to elaborate, but not too much elaboration. So 60 seconds, 60 seconds. This is another one. If you're a little bit more advanced and you've already done your presentation before and you have practiced it, or maybe. What, this is week one, week two, and then maybe week three you can refine it even more. Follow this. Spend a little bit of time on maybe the problem. So these are just some options for you. You can take a picture. You're not going to know what those icons are there now that I think about it. <laughs> Match it up with the picture that you took before it. Yeah. Got you. All right. <laughs> so let me walk you through what that sample would be. Here would be an op a, a teaser slide is just that opening slide that we talked about earlier. The matrix, the sound, whatever it is, your teaser slide. Here's some examples of some businesses that we did. We have their logo, your vi the visual, and a tagline. Real short and sweet. You do not need the date. We all know the date of September 24th. You do not need your title. Just what your company is or what your solution is. Logo, visual, tagline. Sometimes people put the, tw the Twitter handle and all that. I think that's better at the last. But if you want people to tweet during it, 
go ahead. So just remember to be purposeful. Next thing, elevator pitch, 30 second blurb. What are you gonna say in 30 seconds? We create kick-ass presentations that empower companies and individuals to communicate effectively through visuals. So it's witty, specific, and memorable. So whatever that is for you, that's what you're going to put up there, and then you've got to find the visual to match that. Okay. The problem. What are you solving? Now, this is pretty easy because we had the reverse pitches earlier, so they told you what the problems were. But visually, how are you going to convey that message? So let me walk you through some examples. This one, pollution, lost dog was the problem. They had a GPS for dog. Um, gamers, they had a problem finding good gamers or paying for the game. And then Pony and Brandon from Eat the Street, they needed the, this bill amended for food trucks. So it was a really cool story that we were able to sh share and help them do that. Here's your story. A lot people, facts tell, stories sell. Have you ever heard of that? So you want to share your story, but you also have to have proof and some facts around that. You can't just fluff and tell a bunch of stories. You have to have both sides of the brain. So why did you pick that problem to solve? That is so important when you're up here. People got to know why, why you even care about the solution that you're doing. So here would be an example. Again, the, the bill, eat the street. I told them um, to invite for the next, eat. oh, I missed, was last night eat the street? Shucks, who went to that? Dang, it was spicy. Oh, I got to make sure there's an app to remember the food, the farmer's markets. See? Uh-huh. Okay. <laughs> um, eat the street. So this is a good story that she was able to, she was able to change the contract to get that makers and tasters land from Kamehameha Schools. So all of that was really cool through, our, through the presentation and the story that she delivered. Next one, this gentleman, this client wanted to change Thomas Square. And he had to present to uh, Codwell to, he never presented though. I don't, I got to follow up with him. He never presented it. But if he would have presented it, he would have had an amazing story to tell to change the park of Thomas Square. He had a really good idea. Next one, NFL. How many of you have kids that play in the NFL, or not the NFL? <laughs> I was like, wait a minute, yeah. <laughs> kids that play football. <laughs> Or on their way to play in the NFL. The NFL has hardly changed their uniforms. So my client had a cool uniform. Instead of putting more medical people in the field, they would change the uniform. So he was able to communicate this to the NFL and get them to slowly change. It's still a process, uh, but it was a really cool solution to the problem. So just some examples for you that you can get inspired to deliver your solution to their, the problems that you saw earlier. So the solution, what is it? Well, that's what you've been talking about, right? Do you have your solution yet? It's too soon, yeah? <laughs> so, but what, why should you care? What is that solution in your app? And that's what the other mentors here tell you, but here's some visual examples. So this was a water uh, recycling solution. This is Flow Water, that was one of our clients. His water is at the uh, Health Bar UH. How many of you drink Flow Water? It's really good water. Oh, I love it. You just bring your banana has the flow water there. You know where banana is? Do I eat too much? <laughs> I like know all the foodie. And so banana at, at um, so yes, and they have the, the flow water right there. So you can get it for free. You don't have to buy a banana, but we do. And again, uh, Pony and Brandon with Eat the Street and the solution. So these are all the solutions. Uh, quickly and accurately find your dog through the GPS. It was like a collar. It was so cool. So demo, a lot of times people may not have time to show a demo, but hopefully you have time to develop the demo. So how can you walk through your audience on the demo? So a lot of times people use videos for the demo, but I've seen it not work. So it just depends. So you can relate to that. You've seen it or it's buffering. Oh, it's so tricky because the HDMI cables are finicky or the video doesn't work or the program's still programming it. You're relying it on the other computer. And so just be safe. Uh, you're going to export it. We, everyone might be different, but we'll show you some demos. So you want a demo kind of similar to this. You want to sell your audience. He loves bacon. Everybody this loves bacon. The scent, the mouth -watering taste. Didn't think Does anyone own one of these? Because I'm coming to your house. We're going to eat some bacon. Perfect bacon bowls. Perfect bacon bowls.
So a problem, solution, sales, same thing. <laughs> you want to de deliver a perfect bacon bowl to your audience. So you can do a live demo, mock-up, beta, or prototype. Whatever it is, uh, just make sure you can walk your audience through the process. So have them take out their phone if you're that advanced and you already have the app ready. I don't know if we have enough time. These, these programs are amazing. I'm sure they can. But just make sure it's clean, it's simple, it's a process that they can walk through. You do not want to present up in a stage and then you go out and press play and you talk about unexpected discoveries. About unexpected discoveries. Now, I work in solar technology industry and my small startup is looking to force ourselves into the environment by paying attention to <laughs> paying attention to crowdsourcing the death wheel we call it in the Apple world video of what we do <laughs> hang on a moment it might take a moment to love oh. we'll just we can just skip I'll just skip through the video instead. <laughs> How many of you have seen that video? It, it was a made up video, it didn't really happen. But you can watch the full video, it's, it's like 18 minutes long, and they come out with, in rainbow onesies and they're throwing the rainbow balls, and it's a big ordeal about this, but it's so funny because it obviously happens and it's so true, but this is how the ending of the video is. Solar technology is, uh, oh, that's all my time. Thank you very much. His time ran out, wasting it on the video playing. So Jones, don't be that guy trying to get the video to play and waste. So now that we're on the topic of videos, a lot of times when we do a pitch workshop, don't want to play a video for 15, 20 minutes because they can go online and watch that on YouTube later. So you can do about a two to three minute video, max maybe a minute, but they're here to listen to you present, not to watch a video. So if you, when, you're pr when you're pitching, don't play a, vi a long video. You can do some, but it's not real long. Don't rely on the internet, this is huge. Now, fortunately, we're in a good room that has good internet that this event paid for, by the way. So thank them for doing that for you. But you don't wanna rely on it. Have you ever seen it buffering, buffering, and ooh, what's that commercial where they're, it's going in and out, the body? Have you seen that commercial? Who is it? Thank you, so good. I wasn't the, I'm like, do they know what I'm talking about here? So you just don't want to embed it. You don't want to rely on the internet. So you want to embed it. Don't rely on the internet, embed it. Just like this. And you want to make sure it works, practice it, play it. So many times we'll have clients come in and they don't even practice their video or play it. And so this was nine separate videos embedded and they all work so I was just showing an example of how to embed it so if you don't know how to embed it we can show you how to do that but it's pretty easy especially if in, Ke in Kino if you're using lap uh, Apple Kino is a lot easier to embed than PowerPoint impact whose lives will this change and impact obviously your family but you want to show impact how do you do that well, you saw, you saw some of the problems earlier, the homeless problem, traffic, education, transit. So really focus, oh, so this, this, I see this all the time, I just saw it earlier. Remember when uh, the homeless picture was up there and it was bright and cheery and happy? But really it's not, so it should have been grayscale, negative. Like our smoke presentation is negative. So think about the reaction of the audience when you look at every slide. If I put this picture, how is the audience going to react? Now, there's many different reactions, I'm sure, but you got to think, think that way when you're designing it. What's your model? Maybe you don't have a business. Maybe it's just a, something that you're creating for fun out of the love of whatever it is, but it could potentially create revenue for yourself and definitely the state. So think of it as a business. Put your business hat on. 
and sustainability, that's huge. You, it's got to be sustainable because a lot of the people here earlier were talking about, oh, if you just make something that doesn't last a year, you put all that time and effort into it, it doesn't last. So you want it to be sustainable, but not only for you, your business, but for everyone else on the island and the United States. This isn't just local, right? We want to make an impact on the world. So make sure the model is communicative, can make communicated effectively. So business model is really simple, revenue shared and sponsors. It may have changed by now, but yet she had three business models, subscription based, devices, ads, whatever it is. Business model, ecosystem. They, were, they weren't looking for funding, they were just looking for an ecosystem. So it just depends on what you're looking for, but communicate it in a very simple way. Your team, did everyone get good teams today? I saw them at lunch out there, it's so cool. Did you get on a team? What do you mean? What team are you on? Not, not yet? Yeah. What about you? Uh, this, guy. this guy. He's like, uh, this guy. You know that shirt that says this guy? You got to get it on now. Get the, get the shirt on. This guy. So that's what the point is. You want to have great teams. Make sure it's back. If it was two of me's or two of Corey's, probably not. So you have to have diverse teams. Some sales and marketers, some programmers, some business, whatever it is. But that's why you have the, the dots. The red dots, green dots, and is there a blue dot, the business developer? Yes, okay. So that's what the program is for, so you can be diverse and balanced. And edify your team. Be proud of your team. They worked hard to do this. So here's some just examples. You can do a group picture. You can put them individually in boxes or squares. Or this was a gaming app, so we put their gamer tag on there, because that's you can have it, all the sponsors on the slide too. So it just depends on who is on your team. But put them on there. Yeah. Looks really good. Make sure you uh, share your needs, your, maybe your finances, your finances, your distribution, your resources. Here's some examples of what that would look like. What do you need? Obviously you need money to change it, so we get that. But say that you need that. You're currently looking for XYZ amount from all of this, whatever it is, social debt, raising, capital, whatever it is. But I don't want you to end on, okay, great, thank you. Now, uh, legal-wise, I'm not sure what you guys can ask, so we need to clarify that. But make sure you're asking for something. Have a call to action. Next steps, what do you do and why now? So obviously, they're going to go through this program. There's going to be different layers of prizes, so we'll kind of know. But what if you go in there and go, let's have a meeting today. Let's go network. That's the point. Get out there. Go meet the right people for your business or your solution. So call to action. Have the slide up here. Don't go, okay, thank you. That was nice. And then go off the stage. Have a slide up here or something that has your information. Let's reconnect. Questions. How can we help? How can you help? Join our global movement. Uh, whether you're, you're, you're interested and you have questions, buy the product, join the team, or come to Eat the Street. That's what their call to action was. Because they were like, I'm not raising money, but you can invite them to come to Eat the Street. So just have your audience do something at the end, whatever that is. So recap, contact, and follow up. So your closing slide, you're gonna recap everything. And so for an example, tea lit, street grinds, Sinet. Challenges, oh, did you need a picture of that? Hold on, let me go back, sorry. Ready? It's gonna go fast, hurry. <laughs> I think it's on automatic, okay, there it goes. So you have your website, your Twitter, your email, have that on there. All of the ideas, this is a, this is a transition to what I'm going to show you, some of the ideas that we did. We gave you some samples. So these were the problems. Campaign spending, family visitation, scheduling. You saw, everyone saw the problems earlier, right? Okay. So here's three examples that we already gave you. So maybe it's one of your businesses. We already did one of the slides for you. So you can take it. <laughs> Corey's like, what do you want me to do? I'm like, just make a sample slide real quick. <laughs> it takes three to five hours each slide, but that's okay. Problem, homeless outreach and services, impact, made in Hawaii products and solution. These are your three examples. So here's the problem for homeless and, re and outreach service. Remember when I said grayscale? That's a problem slide. You don't want a happy problem slide. It's a problem. So this was some research that we got from LA Times. This is just a sample, that's why we wrote sample up there. But you can, Mike can get inspired, that's yours. An impact slide, how is 
uh, products made in Hawaii made an impact? Well, let me show you. They have allowed small business to grow, increased sustainability, traveled to, to Hawaii. So those are just examples that you can do and you want to walk your audience through the example or through your solution. And then solution farmers market. I already told you earlier, see if I would have known eat the street. Corey and I always drive around. We're like, oh, the farmer's market. I, would, I wish I had an app to tell me that that was it. So whoever that is, we're going to do it. We, wanna, we want that app. Daily island locations, times, parking information, hours of operation, social media updates. There's your slide for that already. Anyone have that idea yet, the app? Take a picture now. <laughs> Recreate it. A keynote, a PowerPoint, or a PDF. Well, why do you think? Well, because it depends on where you're presenting. Someone might have a PC, someone might have a keynote. So you always want different versions of your presentation. You also want to back it up. This guy did not back up his software or his program. So you don't want to be like that guy. Back it up. <laughs> and you can do that by putting in Dropbox, email it, or USB drive, which we do that every time we have a backup of our presentation. I'm slightly OCD when it comes to that, but it's on a computer, it's on a jump drive, it's in, in Dropbox, it's everywhere. Presenting tips. I can give you a lot of presenting tips. Corey's telling me to be louder. But I want you to be inspiring when you present, like this guy. Have you seen this commercial by Microsoft? He gets the dog at the end. He used the PowerPoint to get a dog. Who does that? And then the husband tries to, to go play golf and it doesn't work. <laughs> it's funny. Yeah, so he got the dog. <laughs> so three things that I can tell you today. Audi connect with the audience, be yourself, and rehearse. Don't practice. I want you to rehearse as if you're presenting. There's a difference. Is your audience open to hearing what you're saying? Or maybe you have a little resistance in the audience. So you got to have to know your audience a little bit. Or if you're a PC and go into Mac world, that might be a little challenge. <laughs> so know your audience. You also want to be yourself. You don't want to be this guy or this guy. You don't want to be Tony Robbins or Iron Man. And you might be thinking, well, why? Because they're only being themselves. And you, maybe, sort of, he's in a costume. So no reading off your slides. So when I say that, I don't, I don't want your back to the audience. So if I was presenting always like this, that's a disconnect. So you want to communicate to your entire audience. You can glance at the slide, but as you might have noticed, all my slides are in front of me. I use peripheral vision. My slides are right here. Sometimes harder to do, but don't read off your slides. It's a disconnect to the audience. Like this, behind the podium, reading off the slides. They're not engaging the audience. Too much information behind a laptop. I've seen people do that behind a laptop. No, nothing in front of you. Be more like a TED Talk. Present your ideas just like a TED Talk. Michael Bay, anyone know him? He's the transformer. So you've seen this video. He freaks out. His teleprompter goes out and he cannot talk. He's, he's, he, was, he left the stage. So you can watch it later. But the point is, just because you're the CEO on your team might not be accurate why you need to present. Meaning, if you're a presenter, present it. So all of you might not be comfortable present. Did you know that's the number one fear is to do a presentation? People rather die than present. But if you have fun up here and you have great slides, you're, you're not going to. I promise you, it'll be fun. If you rehearse, that's what we're going to do. I po we'll probably do another session or something with you guys if you want to, to rehearse. You can rehearse in front of your boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, wife, your animals, your stuffed animals, and your mirror. You're going to go do this, Nathaniel, aren't you? <laughs> but don't wing it. I want you to rehearse it. Don't, don't, don't wing it, please. So any questions what we have? Yes. How long does it take you to make a slide? Perfect. Oh, my gosh. I have a slide for that. Hold on. She said, how long does it take you to make your slides? So I will answer that. Uh, we have free resources for you to look online if you have if you want inspiration you can go and slide share This is the link if you want to take a picture The next slides for you ready it takes us 30 to 120 hours to create presentations I know you don't have that time But again, just do what you can best and make it look as nice as you can 30 to 60 minutes per slide so we talked about design 
We do presentation workshops for all clients locally, internationally, and all over the world. You may see some that are f familiar to you. Uh, we do consulting, so if you ever want some consulting, we have done Accelerate UH, uh, Startup Weekend, Ex Energy Accelerator. I'm going to put the hackathon up here for next time, can I? Okay, good. And workshops, we do workshops just like this. So Todd, I'd love to do a workshop with your people to help them. Uh, we did a workshop in Japan and India. And Oha La Piatra HMSA. It's fun. We love to do this stuff. So I just want to share a little bit about what we do. We run events. We specialize in helping events. And these are just some of the events we do. But I want to end with this. Everyone has an idea? Yes? But the presentation of the idea is just as important as the idea itself. So you've got to be able to communicate it effectively. That was on the, for the pitch, the AMC. So you have 27 days now, because you can't count today. And imagine your app here. It's going to be awesome. I'm pumped up for you guys. I know you're pumped up, Todd, to see these apps. So I want to help you ride the wave of crappy presentation. That's what we're here for, to help you do. So thank you guys so much. We're done. I really appreciate it. Thank you. And if you have any questions, here's our email, website, feel free to. Did you guys get value out of today?